Hello, this is Sandra Brown of Happiness Past 60. And today, I think we're going to go over some dog ownership tips that's going to really make your life easier if you're thinking about getting a dog. And also, I have some dog recommendations, what breeds to get. I wish somebody had done this to, for me. We just didn't have access to all this when I purchased my dogs. But, yeah, if I were going to get another dog, I'll tell you the ones I would have picked out. Especially for seniors. Well, for anybody, but seniors particularly. Um, we need to be careful what dog you get. All right. Number one. And I had mentioned this in a video prior to this. And it's called, the video before this was called, Should I Get a Dog? Make sure you look at that. There's a lot of good information on there. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but if you're going to get a dog, if you have a yard with a fence, oh, wow, so much better. And even better than that, where you can just open the door and let the dog out, would be if you have a doggy door. I just seen my hair sticking out here. There. <laughs> but a doggy door is great because you can, if you're not there to open the door and let your dog out, they can let themselves out. That's what uh, I had for my dog, Millie. It was wonderful. I, mean, I didn't like leaving her, but there's times where you have to drive a distance. And um, I didn't have anyone to watch her. I had that doggy door. It was great. And the yard was all fenced in. She couldn't get out. So that would be a great thing to get. Um your first year, I had mentioned this before, of having this dog should be total dedication to this dog. There's so much it has to learn, especially with housebreaking. If you don't get it right, if you don't get this dog housebroken correctly and train the dog, it's for the rest of its life, it's, it's messed up. And it's going to make you miserable and the dog miserable because they want to please you but they just don't understand. I haven't done this, but I would do this if I was starting all over. Take a dog obedience class. Take your little dog with you. I'm not sure what age, but I'm thinking maybe five or six months they start them. It'd be so worth it. And you'd be so proud of your little dog. And when people come over and they don't jump on people or bark and don't beg at the table, and they'll sit and it can save their lives when you teach your dog to stay instead of running out into a street should they get away from you. I mean, that's the most important thing that they can do that. I would say if you're going to sleep with your dog, that's what you want. I have no problem with it. But if you are allergic to dogs, not a good idea. If the dog sheds, you're not going to really want that all over your bed. So you want to get a dog that doesn't shed. So if you're going to sleep, don't want to sleep with a dog, don't even start it. And most people start that when they're a puppy because they're so cute and, and lovable and they cry. You know? So don't start it. Um, I'll give my story and Millie later, but she's done both. Millie has slept in our bed. Because my, my former husband, she, he liked her to do that. But, you know, after he passed away, I, I started training her to sleep in a carrier. And it, actually, it's better for her because she would get under the blankets. And I was always concerned she can't breathe good, especially in the winter when you have a lot of blankets on there. But if they have a carrier, then... It's all, it has holes all over it and things like this for air and it's open in the front. Uh, that's what she sleeps in now. All I do at night, I open the door and I say, go night, night. And she, she goes right in there. Slow. 
But she goes right in there and I never hear a peep out of her at all until I'm ready to open the door. And don't leave them in there late if you do that because, you know, they need to go potty. Like we get up maybe in the middle of the night, but, but they can't. So first thing, let them out. Okay, I'll get a non-shedding dog. We talked about that. Um, I will mention some of them I know that are non-shedding, but uh, if you see a particular breed of dog that you like their looks, uh, then you can check. Check and see if they if the dog shed. Um, you don't want a dog that's too big because if you're a senior, this dog can pull you down, trip you up, hard for you to bathe. They can't get on your lap and cuddle if you like that. If you have to clean up dog poop, <laughs> it's bigger. <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be you'd be better off with a a medium to small dog. Uh, also, you, if you find a breed of dog that you like, make sure you check about their health problems. Some of them really have a lot of health problems. And, you know, who needs that and more medical bills? And if they do, a certain breed has a lot of health problems, they probably shouldn't be breeding them. Why do that to a dog? The best place, if you're a senior, to look for a dog, and the cheapest place, it would be the shelter. Get a senior dog. Don't if you get if you're older and you get a puppy, you're gonna go through all the chewing stuff where they chew everything up, the housebreaking, the they're full of energy and I mean the, too much energy sometimes. If you get an older dog from the shelter, you know those dogs need a home. Sometimes their master passed away or they just moved or they have an allergy. There's a lot of different reasons. But um, yeah, give a dog a home. Like some of them are maybe eight years old, seven years old, six years old. And if they're a small dog or even a medium dog, um, like my, my dog is a Jack Russell and she's 12 and a half years old and she's in very good condition. So you'll have a lot of years from them. Um, make sure that you start looking into something. Now, we have what they call bed and biscuit. And it's a place where if we need to get away without the dog, that you know it's a safe place, it's a place that they like. And you need to get them used to it. You don't want to just drop your dog off and leave her for two or three days, him or her. This, that can be traumatic. So what we did is we took Millie in the first time for about, oh, two or three hours, and then came and picked her up. She knew we were coming back. And um, and we did that a few times, we made it a little longer, and then once we stayed all day, then we were able to stay all night and then two or three days. And when I take her there, she gets really excited. She wags her tail and gets very excited and real happy to see the people because, I, there's one reason I can kind of say I think they take good care of her. And they have a good, a very good reputation. So look into that. Uh, when you leave your dog, if you're leaving your dog at home there for a while, and they have that anxiety, you know, I'm never a person that, well, I'm kind of a laid back person, but you, kind of, <laughs> in some ways. I don't get too worked up over stuff, so. I think because of that, my dog doesn't get real worked up. They pick they pick up your feelings. And so when I leave, I don't make a big thing out of it. I just say, stay here. And then I just leave. I don't say, oh, honey, now I'll be back. I won't be gone. <laughs> I won't be gone long. And making them like, whoa, where are you going? <laughs> just say, okay, stay. You don't have to explain to a dog they're a dog. Okay, don't pick them up to protect them all the time. That's going to make them fearful and mean. Um, let them hold their own. When I see a big dog coming, you know, from a distance, I go, are they friendly? And they'll usually say yes or no. And if it's yes, 
I, I just let her hold her own and she, they smell each other and get to know each other and she doesn't even notice size. Oh, don't allow your dog to bite or growl or have bad behavior. Now, that happens a lot if you have a little dog. Little dogs get away with a lot because they're cute. And it's funny, especially I've noticed it with chihuahuas. The, the, the chihuahua will growl at some of the, oh, it's so cute. Well, they're going to keep doing that, and it's not cute. I've never allowed my dogs to growl at me, ever. I've just not had dogs that do that much anyhow. Uh, so they need to behave just like a big dog does. They are not supposed to be rewarded for their bad behavior. I mean, because you want people to like your dog and, and they don't know. So it's up to you to teach them to be socialized. Talking about socialize. Uh, socialize your dog with other dogs. If there's a dog park, wonderful. Even if you've got a backyard, they're not socializing there. So take them to the dog park and let them get to, they have an area for small dogs and let them, you can let them loose in there and they can learn how to socialize with other dogs. If there's children in your neighborhood, let them be around children that socializes them with children so they won't be biting. Make sure whatever dog you like, you check their temperament and their energy needs. And dogs get bored, just like children get bored. They get bored. I notice it with Millie, she'll, especially the winter, she'll start kind of just pacing around. <laughs> and like, oh, she's bored. And they just need to try to walk or do something. Even if it's with a toy and you throw the toy for them or wrestle around with them, something they, you know, sometimes they, you can get them running in the house. That's really good. And that's another advantage of having a small dog that can run in the house and get some exercise. Make sure you give your dog something to chew. Um, Kind of, you got to be careful with those rawhide. I heard they can string out and get caught in their intestines and stuff. Now, what I give my dog is uh, chicken jerkies that I get on Amazon. Oh, she loves those things. They're just pure chicken. They're nothing added to them at all. And I break one in half and I give her one in the morning after she comes in. And she gets one in the evening when she goes out, when she comes back in. And she knows that. Boy, does she. Um, I think I brought this up before. If you work, it's not a good idea to get a dog unless you've got someone who's going to be with them. Don't even bother doing it. That's horrible. Do not cage the dog while you're gone. I hate that. I mean, if you're not working, you just need to go to the store, do something, and there's no alternative if they tear the house up or something, and the cage is ample space, then that's fine, but let them out a lot. If you tend to forget how long it's been, use your Alexa. I don't dare say anything, she'll hear me, but you can say things like, uh, Alexa, remind me in two hours to let the dog out, something like that. But that really works good. Um, a dog bed, get a dog bed for them. If you don't want them on the furniture, they have their own little spot. Plus, when people come over, if they feel a little bit overwhelmed by all the company, and especially if there's children, they want to get away a little bit, they've got that safety area. They kind of like it not out in the open, but maybe in just in a corner somewhere. And they just feel safe there. Have a nice little blanket for them and, and one of their favorite toys or a chew bone. And, and, and Millie has been on the furniture years and she since i've been remarried taught her not to get in the furniture and she's fine with it now she won't even come up if i call her you know started to do that one day and i shouldn't have done it but she didn't come up but she does when we're gone we'll get on the back of the sofa it's covered up about my my recliner <laughs> once in a while we catch her up there um Let's see if I missed anything. Oh, I was trying to cover all this. Now, 
I have a list. Oh, and the other thing is about the, the lifespan. I mentioned it before. Large dogs have a very short lifespan. Small dogs, the smaller they are, the longer they live. In fact, I know those Pomeranians live to be about 30 years old. And um, Chihuahuas, I'm not sure how old, maybe in their 20s at least. My, I know my daughter, my granddaughter's, hers is 15 years old. So, okay, I've covered that. Now, I, I'm going to put on here some pictures of some dogs that I would recommend for seniors. And uh, it'll be pictures with their names. And if there's one that you like, you can just put that in search and find out more about them. Okay, so you got kind of long with that. So please let me know what dog you're thinking about getting. I'll tell you what I do know about them because I've owned a lot of dogs. And, uh, and tell, or tell me what kind of dog that you do have. And, and anything about the lifespan, if you have one that's lived a long time. Or is there a dog you would say don't get, that you wouldn't recommend? All right, it was so nice visiting with you. Uh, I guess it's going to be the end of my dog stories, and I'll have a chit-chat next time. Okay, bye-bye, folks. Love you.